We are here in Santa Clarita because we're going to go to the Gentle Barn. We're going to see farm animals. It's like a sanctuary for abused animals or farm animals that don't have homes anymore. It's great. Yeah, now they stay here and they're rehabilitated and it's amazing. And what we're not going to do... <laughs> Nothing. What She's are we not, not talking about. Do? She's not talking about an incident that happened to me last time. We're not going to feed horses we're not supposed to feed. But of course we're going to know which ones because the proper people are going to be there to tell us rather than us finding out for ourselves like I did. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yes, it is. Direction. That way it doesn't mess up his hair. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. And if you guys want it, I actually have specially cut carrots for bonsai. We have to cut his carrots a little differently because his mouth is so small. If you wanted, you can reach into my pink bucket right here and you can each grab about one or two pieces. You can just reach underneath the bag. The reason I have the bag there is so he can't sneak carrots. <laughs> so you guys can just grab one or two pieces. Just make sure you hold it out nice and flat. That piece is perfectly fine for him. Good job. And then when you're feeding, just make sure you use a nice flat hand because horses and donkeys can't see past their nose because their eyes are set at the sides of their head. So if your fingers are like this, they might actually think your fingers are part of the control. Yeah. Let him smell you. Once he smells you, then go up and pet him. What do you want? I can't guess what you want. <laughs> I had 
I guess you didn't have one. I told everybody huh? leave later. Told the animals. They would want. Hello. Hi. Hi. So this Hi. is a whisper. Whisper. You're so, pretty. You like to get your butt scratched. Yes. <laughs> yes. So one thing about whisper is she puts you where she wants. So wherever she is, that's where she likes to be. <laughs> a woman that knows what she wants. <laughs> Look at this little. Oh, my gosh. oh. This is <laughs> it is. Are you recording that? Yeah, I'm recording that. She likes her butt scratch. Like whispers. Whisper knows what she wants. She got back. <laughs> oh yeah, whisper. You like it. You like your butt scratch. You like your butt scratch. <laughs> Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Just back you gently, I would say probably on his, you know, upper body or neck area. Um, if he swings his head, just take a step back and approach him very confidently. Hi, baby. where she has itches. Basically she has this pretty well trained. She also likes to turn around and lick spots. So when she has an itch somewhere, she might turn around and lick it and then look at you like, you know. Like, hello. Yeah. So I was warning them because it's usually a spot she has a hard time reaching. So it's always usually pretty dramatic because she'll be like. <laughs> and I just, sometimes people think she, they just see her big, her mouth coming. So if you're standing back there and she doesn't know, she might jump on you. It's still like a practice. <laughs> Like We've had Athena since 2012. Like I said, she did come from a really severe abuse case. And so it took her a really long time to trust us. That's why we still don't yet touch her face and her neck. Um, actually, the side of her neck, she's been okay with. That's her neck spot. But you have to be standing behind her. So, um... Right. Aww, she's giving her a hug. Him a hug. Her. Her a hug. I'm sorry, Aretha. I like his name. Yeah. He's very handsome. I want to hug him too. Yeah. Let's put his mom, Karma, first. Oh. In the back, our culture. Nice! Um, that's wonderful. So I'm Ellie, and the general farm was my dream since I was seven. Um, I grew up obsessed with animals. I think I was born that way. And so the minute I could walk, I was either chasing somebody's dog down the sidewalk or playing in the lakes and woods with animals. <laughs> My parents were not amused. <laughs> they didn't want a house full of animals, kept getting rid of them. Every time they did, it was awful, and I would say, how can you do this to me? And they'd say, Ellie, when you grow up, you can have as many animals as you want. So I now have about 170 animals. <laughs> and so I want to tell you a really cool story, uh, something that happened a few years ago, and it's just the coolest story ever. Raise your hand if you on YouTube or on Facebook have seen Karma's Reunion. Anybody? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to tell you her story because it's the greatest story. And it taught us a lot about animals. So uh, several years ago, we were investigating a cruelty case for, uh, for many years. And we finally got enough evidence to shut this guy down and bring animals back to the gentle barn for healing. One of the animals, her name was Karma, and she's a cow. And she came in with a few other cows, and from the minute she got onto the property, all she did was cry. Moo, moo, pacing back and forth, and pacing back and forth, and crying and crying and crying. And she had food, she had water, she had shelter, she had friends, she passed the vet check. We couldn't understand what was wrong with her. 
And so this went on all day long. And at first I was like, well, maybe she just doesn't understand our intentions. Then later in the day I was like, well, maybe she misses animals that weren't so lucky to be saved. I don't know, I was kind of making excuses for her, but she kept crying. So Jay and I sleep with the windows open so that if the animals need us, we can hear them. And nobody got any sleep that night because Karma literally cried all night long, incessantly. And so finally at five in the morning, I was like, that's it. I have got to figure this out. She is trying to tell us something. So I went downstairs and I was like, Karma, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I know you're trying to tell me something. I'm trying. And I scanned her body to see if there was something the vet check missed. And I finally found it. She was dripping milk. What does that mean? She had a baby. She had a baby. So I'm like, oh my God, you've been trying to tell me all night. You've been screaming for your baby and it took me this long to hear you. I'm so sorry. So I called up Jay who was handling the kids in the house. And I said, Jay, she's crying because she has a baby. And he's like, oh my God, I'm on it. So he hung up the phone and he called the backyard butcher where we rescued her and the others from and said, dude, not cool, where's the baby? And the guy was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I had to hide the baby from you because I had already sold him. I'm so sorry, you can't have him. And Jay said, this is absolutely unacceptable. I need that baby right now. The mom is freaking out. And the guy said, you can't have him. The only reason we're here is because the truck broke down, but as soon as we fix the truck, we're out of here. Well, as soon as Jay heard that, he hung up the phone, hooked up the truck and trailer and raced over there as fast as he could. And when he got there, they were still there. And so Jay uh, gets out of his truck and goes up to the guy and he says, this is how this is gonna work. <laughs> That's why I married him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm gonna fix your truck. You're gonna give me that baby. And the guy's like, what are you talking about? We've been trying to fix the truck for three hours. What do you know that we don't know? And Jay says, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna fix your truck, you're gonna give me the baby. So the guy, not believing that he could do it, shook Jay's hand. Well, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but when a truck is, uh, or a car is, is parked on a, a hill, it could rest back and get stuck in its gears. So all Jay had to do was pull the truck three feet up the hill, unstick the gears, and the truck was fine. <laughs> The guy was furious, but honored the handshake and handed over the baby. Yay. Yeah. So Jay drove the baby home, and Karma was in that pasture like she is right now. And the minute she heard her baby's little voice from inside the trailer, and they heard each other's voices, Karma's screaming, trying to get over the fence, trying to get through the fence, going nuts. We brought the baby. now. We know the story from the mom's perspective. So this entire time we realize how much suffering is imposed on this mom. But let's talk about the baby for a minute. One minute, he's nursing, he's safe, he's protected, he's loved, he's totally carefree. And the next minute he's tied up in the back of the pickup truck by himself for 24 hours. So he never, he was so stressed out and he never thought he was gonna see his mom again. So when we took him from the trailer around the corner and he saw his mom for the first time, he was so flooded with so much relief that he literally passed out in front of her. Aww. He fainted. So she came up to him and she sniffed him and licked him and made little sounds to him and gently encouraged him to get up. And then she licked and groomed his entire body all the while making these little low soft moves to him. And finally he went around to the side and nursed. And she let out a big sigh of relief and she's not made a sound since. <laughs> so that's where we thought the story would end. Happily ever after, mom and baby together for the rest of their lives. It gets better. So eight months later, my animal caretaker came up, uh, up to me at the end of a long day and said, Ellie, I'm worried about karma. And I said, why? And he said, her udders are swollen. And I said, oh, do you think she has an infection? And he said, no, I think she's gonna have a baby. And I said, but Aldo, that's impossible. We rescued her with a tiny nursing baby. Surely they wouldn't have impregnated her that soon. And he said, just check on her. I was like, okay. So me and Jay have a ritual where every single night before bed, we go and check on the animals. And we make sure, we make sure everybody's good. We tuck them into bed with kisses and cookies and blankets and make, make sure everybody's fine. So this particular evening, Jay wasn't feeling well, so he went to bed early. Well, it wasn't really early. It was 11 o'clock already. And at 11 o'clock at night, I did my rounds to make sure all the animals were okay. And I came up to the cow pasture, and Karma's face was right there at the fence looking at me. And I came up and I said, Karma, Alma thinks you're about to have a baby. What's going on? 
and she turned her body around and there was a foot sticking out of her. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I ran up and I woke Jay up and I woke the kids up and I was like, wake up, we're having a baby. <laughs> and we rushed downstairs. And this is where it gets good. And I promise you this is a true story. It was so amazing. We got downstairs. We had, we had 20 cows at the time, around 20 cows at the time. When we got down there, every single solitary cow was in a perfect circle around Karma. Aww. No one moved, no one he shoved, nobody got bored and walked away. Every single cow was quietly and peacefully in a perfect circle around her. So me and my kids took our place in the circle and we stood there. And we watched her push, and we watched her contract, and we watched her labor, and we watched her have her son, another boy. And we watched her lick him off and dry him up. And we watched him struggle to stand and learn to walk and figure out how to nurse. This whole thing took two hours. Nobody moved. And then finally, once she had drunk her fill and, she, and the baby went off to the side to sleep off his birth, every single cow broke the circle simultaneously and formed a single file line in front of the baby. And again, nobody shoved. Nobody was like, oh, I was here first. The matriarchs and the elders went in the front, the young, more submissive cows went in the back, and everyone knew their, their place in the line. And they lined up, and once everyone was in line, the matriarch in front stepped forward, she licked the baby, she smelled the baby, she welcomed the baby, introduced herself to the baby, and then she stepped off. And then the second one in line did the same, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, until every single solitary cow took their turn welcoming that baby. And then when all the cows were done, me, my husband, and my children took our turn welcoming the baby. And then we all sat in a big circle around him in the moonlight and watched him sleep with smiles on our faces. And no one reported him. <laughs> oh my god. It was a long time ago when I didn't have cell phones, you know? It was like back in the stone ages. So, and it was the most amazing thing, you know? Um, we named him Surprise. <laughs> and Surprise... It was amazing to watch this family raise him because every single solitary member of that family took a turn playing with him when he was bored, disciplining him later when he was older and he was being a little naughty, babysitting him when mom needed a rest. Everyone took, participated in his upbringing. And he nursed for five years. Now Karma, you, she's down there, you guys should go see her. She's tiny little itty bitty thing. Surprise grew to 3,000 pounds. He was as big as Gentle Ben. He was a monster, huge mountain of a cow. Sweet, like a golden retriever, but huge. And she nursed him for five years, and he had to lay down and roll upside down <laughs> to nurse. And it was a little embarrassing. <laughs> and the doctors, the veterinarians would come and be like, this is absolutely unacceptable. You need to wean them, you need to separate them. And I was like, you know what? Nobody told me when to stop nursing my kids, and I'm not going to tell her. She has infinite intelligence and wisdom, and she knows what's right for that baby, and she knows what's right for her body, and I'm not going to interfere. And so I would go up to her, and I would say, Karma, you know he's in college. You can cut him off now. <laughs> and she would look at me with that sweet, sweet face, and she would say, he's my last baby nurse him as long as I can. And she did. So surprise grew to be 3,000 pounds because cows are genetically engineered to get very big very fast so they can go be done away with when they're only babies at 6 to 12 months old. Uh, and so with that comes mobility issues. So by the time he reached 7 years old it was getting harder and harder and harder for him to walk and eventually he couldn't walk at all and we had to help him out of his body. So he's no longer here. Um, but that whole story taught us so much about animals and how they love their babies just like we do. What are you doing? <laughs> if you touch a chicken, you definitely want to wash your hands. They have a lot of bacteria, especially the feet.
gets a pet pig, then you toss him. Hi, baby. Oh, you got rough hair. You got rough hair. I already got cow boogers on me, it's fine. Like the smile. Right? <laughs> 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 